Hello and welcome. This is Enrique from Frankentune Studio. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer from El Salvador. I created Frankentune Studio back in 2016 as a source of learning and inspiration for affinity artists. By the end of that year, I released my first brush pack, which created Snowball that led me to quit my advertising job in 2017 to spend my full time creating digital products and tutorials for Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and more recently for Affinity Publisher. I hope you enjoyed this little journey through my creative process. In this creative session, we'll have fun doing some experiments to find nasty creative blocks. Nasty, I will show you some of the techniques I use to spark new ideas using my old sketches as the raw material for new creations. You'll learn that not drawing should be overlooked ever. It will be all about exploration, which may take you to fresh, unspoiled art styles, or in the worst case, lead you to super weird results which is not bad at all. The point of the session is to demonstrate that any little doodle may get you out of a creative block and become your next Instagram hit. I will also share my insights on making artistic decisions and executing them using Affinity Designer and Photo with some help from our Frankenstein products. By the way, I prepare a free pack containing all brushes, templates, and color palettes I'll use during the session. You can download this pack from the link in the description. Let's have a quick tour through some of the sketches I got stored in my hard drive. Some of them are scans from all sketchbooks, some of them were drawn digitally. As you can see, there are some good ideas here, but at the time, for any reason, they weren't fully developed. We have some weird creatures here, people from the street, some made-up places, fantasy characters, and other interesting stuff that oftentimes gets just forgotten, either collecting dust in a drawer or just occupying useful space in our hard drives. All of our sketches and unfinished works are pieces of an ecosystem that lives in our brains. Sketches are visual memories you can rely on whenever you need to. So, let's get into this journey to discover what else we can do with our old sketches using Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. I sketched this company of dwarves for a personal project that was put on hold. This was about two years ago, I think. I even managed to vectorize one of them. Let's see what we can do with this one to call it a finished piece. Adding a quick background will make a nice fix. If you want to learn how do I approach this cell shading style, check the tutorial we made for Affinity Spotlight. Look for the link in the description. Let's start blocking out our main shapes. This layered blank template is included in your free creative pack. Our main goal is to grab the viewer's attention to our character. Every decision I'm making here is oriented towards leading the eye onto this brave fellow. I've added a couple of trees pointing to the dwarf, like an arrow, and another one to make our intention less obvious. I'm also framing the corners to create a vignette effect. This vignette type composition will work most of the times when framing single characters. Now, I'll be adding a sky using a gradient tool to create the main atmosphere. Since our character shadows have some bluish and violet hues, I'll match these tones with my gradient. In a separate layer, I start using the nature brushes included in the pack. Don't worry about colors just yet. I'll show you a trick to match them with the rest of the background in a second. I'm just picking some random green tones to add variation. These brushes belong to our Concept Master Nature Pack for Affinity. Now, let's do some magic. Add a recolor adjustment layer and play with the hue, saturation and lightness sliders to make the brushes match the general atmosphere. I need a mix of dark green and blue to create a base shadows.
rasterize the adjustment layer to keep everything clean. Use the color picker to sample the new tones and create more accurate values. This brush called Swamp Leaves has some color dynamics that will create subtle color variations automatically. You can also use the Binds brush to add some cascading-like leaves. Just by combining these two brushes, you'll get super organic variations without even thinking about it. I use this type of brushes back and forth at random. I'm also relying on the color picker all the time to keep my palette consistent. To paint the ground, I select the brush FT Nature Dirt Mod. As I did before, I'm going to pick a random brown color to get started. This one also features color dynamics, so it will create automatic variations for you. I pick some darker bluish tones to blend the floor with the rest of the background. Another way of matching colors is through an HSL adjustment. I rasterize this layer as well. I'll fine-tune the shadows, mid-tones and highlights with a color balance judgment. Group the ground and vegetation layers and rasterize them together. Now, I will apply a color balance adjustment on the dwarf to integrate its lighting with the rest of the scene. If I need to boost the shadows a little bit, I add some curves to the equation. On another layer, I'll start painting the foreground element which should be considerably darker to give us a sense of depth. With the grass bee brush's help, I can add random bunches of weed to make the foliage more realistic. Mixing these brushes and their sizes will give you endless combinations. The key to achieving a pleasant composition is to always follow your original sketch. A beginner's mistake I see quite often is the lack of an underlying composition when using special effect brushes. Without a solid composition underneath, these types of special effect brushes worth nothing. To make this foreground layer really obvious, I boost the blacks with the levels adjustment. Then I fine tune its tones with an HSL1, rasterized to keep painting. Since our scene is laid down, it's a good idea to group and rasterize our second plane and original sketch together. Adjust their levels if necessary. And, you guessed it, rasterize. I keep adding more details to the foreground and second planes. I'm using my grass brush all over to give the sensation of wilderness. In my mind, there's a direct light source coming from the right, so I start painting this light using vivid tones of green. I make sure to pick random tones to keep everything organic. To paint projected shadows, I pick up tones from the layer beneath. As you can see, this process is not different from having a regular round brush. You should always keep an eye on how light affects the environment how it bounces, how shadows are projected, and how values affect the volume of the object you are painting. I always use as few layers as possible to keep things simple, even when they might seem complex in appearance. As you can see, I'm not overdoing anything here. Since I had a nice foundation from the beginning, 
I'm just adding the right amount of elements by simply varying my brushes size and using as few colors as possible. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'll pick the stamp brush called Branch 2 and I'll make my scene fuller just by adding some copies of it on top of all layers. Using the same piece of tree, you'll add tons of variation just by duplicating, rotating, resizing and flipping it. Group all branches and rasterize the result. Group this layer with the foreground as well. Again, rasterize this group to keep painting on it. Now I have set the main lighting and mood, I keep working on the ground, painting the projected shadow of our dwarf friend. I also add some touches of green with the same dirt mud brush to indicate some kind of moss growing there. By pressing Command or Control and clicking on my bottom layer thumbnail, I'm able to select its contours. Using the Rock Formations brush, I add some texture to the rock on the left while keeping its shape intact. I used to add a color balance adjustment above all layers. This will affect everything in the scene making all lighting in general mood more even. To emphasize the atmosphere, I create a selective color adjustment above all background layers except for the first plane. I faded out the shadows so it appears more distant and foggy. A lens filter judgment at the very top will give an instant cinematic feel to any scene. Finally, let's add some golden hour glow. Create a new layer in color dodge mode. Select a red tone and use a soft brush to make the lighter areas more dramatic. Instant magic. Now, our lonely dwarf is not a sketch anymore. And he lived happily ever after, within the boundaries of the picture. There is something about first-generation drawings that sometimes cannot be top when clean it up or refined. That energy, dynamism and charm of a couple of rough lines often gets lost in the final artwork. Today we won't fight against this messy stroke, smudges and chaotic noodling, but let ourselves be carried away by them. We will use some digital watercolor to give this kind of spontaneous slash expressionist look to our sketch. This template brushes and color palettes are also included in your creative pack. We'll start painting a delicate wash on a new layer below our perfectly safe lockdown sketch. I'm using the brush Dry It Up Wash for this purpose. All the brushes we'll be using here come from the Neptune Illustration Kit for Affinity. You can purchase this pack from the link in the description. Oh, come on, son, have some respect for yourself. I tend to use a single color for this type of washes. I usually set this layer at 75% opacity. If my background has some color, I set my layers blending mode to multiply. When painting with digital watercolors, having a stack of multiply layers will help you get a more realistic watercolor feel. Don't forget to import the palette Frankentum Watercolors A. These colors have been sampled from my own Stadler set. We're not getting into details just yet. This wash pass aims to define a basic shading, have some texture and an underlying general tone to work with. Remember, this is not going to be a refined painting. 
we want to keep the sketchy look until the end, so it appears as if it was made this way on purpose from the beginning. Since I'm not quite happy with this bluish tone, I'll add a color overlay effect to this layer and change it to a pale violet tint. To rasterizing rings any bell to you, make sure to untick the keep layer effect option when doing this. Now, let's add a new layer in multiply mode. I'll be mostly using the brush Sandy Godet for this part. This brush will add more digital paint when pressing harder with a stylus and dilute it when applying lighter pressure. You can even smear the paint by varying pressure without lifting up your stylus. This same principle applies to the Apple Pencil, in case you're using an iPad. I always start working with two or three colors on my second layer. The purpose of this is to get a strong overall mood from the beginning. Then I can add colors on top without worrying about muddying up my painting. I want her face to be the point of interest here, so I'll define it better than the rest. I'm adding the first details using red and peachy colors. Notice I'm only painting with pure tones here, no color picking, no secondary colors. What I love to do is to layer up these and create natural blends on the fly. Multiply layers make colors beneath affect the colors of your current layer. The same way dried up washes affect fresh washes with real watercolors. Notice how a manganese blue gets a cobalt blue feel when painted over our underneath wash layer. The unpredictability of this technique is so satisfying. These types of paintings are super relaxing to do. Just put on your headphones and enjoy the moment. I recommend that you stick to a limited color palette to make sure all colors work together, no matter what you choose. With this blue tone, I'm taking care of defining the overall shadows. This is how my second wash looks. I only used three colors here. Now, onto the third wash. Again, on a fresh multiply layer. This is a general wash to give a solid look at the overall picture. I'm using a pale skin tone for this task and filling up the entire line drawing. As I mentioned before, I'm not being specially careful to keep painting within the lines. In fact, I'm deliberately looking to get these color bleeds all over. The flat overall wash will make the painting look more grounded. It will also even out the rest of the colors below, giving them a uniform temperature. Depending on the mood you're going after, this overall wash could be yellow, blue, violet, or any other tone you prefer. In a way, this works like color grading in films. I use the wet and wet brush to create an even and grainy blot of tinted water from time to time. This brush feels very liquid and difficult to control. And that's the point of it. Let's add a color balance adjustment on top of all color layers to intensify them and look for stronger tonal range. I'm aiming for a warmer palette between violet and yellowish hues. I create a new multiply layer on top of a color balance one and start adding some variety to define the leaves that make up her costume. Since our painting has a strong foundation, we're free to use any colors we like, and this won't hurt our picture a bit. But quite the opposite. Our original sketch has practically disappeared by now. With just a few color washes, we've been able to give a breath of fresh air to a once boring, pencil rough. I keep making sure everything I do serves the purpose of making her face the first thing we look at when we see the painting. We can take the liberty of being more spontaneous at this point. I added some random spatters, strokes out of place, weird smudges, etc. It is just until now that I zoom in the painting to add extra details on her face. Zooming in too early in the process will make you miss the overall picture. Now, 
I'm detailing her eyes and facial features, being careful of not overdoing them. I'm just enhancing the parts that will draw more attention, but keeping my strokes simple and loose. An intense wash of red will add extra warmth to the overall composition. I'm using the wet and wet brush randomly, and as you can see, the more careless I am, the more interesting the picture looks. I create another color balance layer at the very top. I want to match the new layer with the rest, but affecting them and the sketch lines simultaneously. Now it's the time for some curves treatment to emphasize shadows and blend the line work with the rest. Finally, we'll be adding some loose inks to make some specific details really stand out. This isn't gonna be a detailed ink work. We'll keep the sketchy look for this part too. I'm defining certain borders of her costume, adding a few hair strands and framing up her face. Luckily enough, her costume is meant to be super organic, so having this type of shaky ink strokes really help accentuate it. The brush I'm using here is called EO Liner and has also been included in our free creative pack. This brush will respond beautifully to your stylus or Apple Pencil pressure and velocity. From shaky hairline strokes to bolder and expressive ones, this brush has many dynamics to play with. Notice I haven't changed the size of this brush at all. It makes up for small details, stippling and strong outlines. All ink brushes included with this pack are part of the Neptune illustration kit for Affinity as well. To add an extra layer of realism, I'll place a texture image. Look for the Neptune Paper 8 JPEG included in your resources folder. I set this texture mode to linear burn. At the very top, I will add an unsharp mask light filter to dry out my color layers and strengthen the paper texture. To add final touches, I've opened my file in Affinity Designer. I created a new layer where I'm gonna add some vector work. This mix of organic textures looks particularly eye-catching. I'm creating random shapes with a pen tool and playing around with blending modes to merge them perfectly with the rest of the painting. I used many of these techniques when I worked doing editorial illustration a few years ago. There, you needed to deliver as fast as possible, otherwise you'd be risking the entire newspaper printing pipeline. If your life's too boring and needs some daily adrenaline kicks, I recommend working for a newspaper or an advertising agency. Creating these strong shapes against the painterly illustration will instantly create a finished look in less than 5 minutes. We don't even need to delete our original sketch. It's sitting there, adding teeth to the entire composition. It's all about contrast and taking advantage of technology. Most of the times, we're trying to emulate traditional techniques because they look beautiful. But having the ability to mix them with the technology we have nowadays makes yourself invincible. Well, that's maybe an overstatement, but hmm, you get the point. Recycling shapes is a smart way of saving time. If any of these shapes look interesting enough for you, create a library out of them and use them on future projects. We could spend the entire day adding details, but we need to stop at some point. This is the ending result. We started with a bland, ugly sketch and turned it into an expressive and gorgeous portrait. I painted these characters a while ago 
using a round brush and some values. From a distance, they look okay, but when you zoom them in, you'll notice how rough this drawing really is. Nothing has been defined yet. Shapes are really vague, some details are just smudges. It's a total chaos that would take hours to refine and get done. But what if we just go with the flow and embrace this chaos? I'm gonna pick this guy up and I'll paste it on a new document. I will apply a light gradient map to have a cleaner sketch and work on top of it more comfortably. This template is available in your creative pack if you want to give it a go. On a new layer and using the pen tool, I'll start tracing our character's contour with a thin 0.5 stroke. I do it super quick and following the same contours as the sketch. Usually, when using vector graphics, we tend to create cleaner lines and correct drawing mistakes. For this experiment, we're gonna do the exact opposite. We're gonna use these wobbly and undefined edges to advantage. If some area is not well defined, we're gonna trace it without paying any attention to details. We're gonna rely on pure interpretation. We're aiming for super organic vector style. Why? Well, just for the sake of having fun and see how this turns out in the end. Experimentation is always risky, you know, but without it, you'll get stuck in a creative plateau within the boundaries of the awful comfort zone. Instead of tracing the wires' contours, I'm just following their path and then I'll use the stroke panel to make them fit the sketch. Select the wires, open the stroke panel and set their width about the same width of the underlying sketch. Keep this wire selected, go to the top menu, layer and select Expand Stroke. I'll do the same with the rest of the wires. Now, I'm going to join all the wires to the larger shape by selecting them and using the Add function from the context menu. This experiment is leading us to a more painterly approach to vectorization, not only as a result, but through the process itself. We're getting to that part in a minute. Laying down a strong silhouette first will allow us to have the big picture solved from the beginning. Then we can relax and have fun with the details. Despite that I'm doing some corrections on the march, I'm not taking too much time on it. Unnecessary precision will ruin the spontaneity we're going after. Now is where the fun begins, using a pencil tool without any feel and with the same 0.5 stroke width, we're going to start hunting shapes. Since everything is undefined, we'll try to draw exactly what we see without questioning what it might be. Affinity Designer has this nice feature of filling paths without the need to be closed. This will allow us to quickly tackle all these weird shapes without worrying about creating perfect closed paths. Are these ornaments? Is this a light reflection, jewelry, a bounce of light, a drop shadow? We don't care. We'll figure this out later. Approaching an illustration with this mindset makes one feel a nice sense of freedom. We're allowing our thoughts to take a short vacation and just let our muscle memory run wild. It is like looking for shapes in the clouds. Everything can be whatever. I try to do these types of creative exercises at least once a week. You need to have the pleasure of being a child again, to fill up pages of pure nonsense without knowing where you're going. Your adult brain will set the rules and tell you what to do later. If some larger shapes are difficult to tackle, I switch the pen tool, draw those paths and switch the pencil tool again. I used to draw the details I want. It's not necessary to trace everything. It's not about tracing only what you see either. You can come up with new shapes if that's what you feel. Just get carried away by the moment. 
Now it's time for coloring. If you want to work in color palette right out of the bat, I recommend using the Frankentuna Finish Session swatches included in your creative pack. Coloring is my favorite part of the entire process. If you work with a limited palette, you can try many combinations. Even do it randomly and you'll never go wrong. You can color paths one by one or select entire groups at once. It's all up to you. As you start filling up all shapes, it all will start to make sense. You'll get to discover what's part of the costume, an accessory, what's functional, what's an ornament, and so on. I usually fill each path randomly, then I recolor them if I need to. Recently, I finished an illustration project that was full of brand guidelines. The client even gave me a small book with rules I needed to follow to the letter. And that's how things work, so I did my best to deliver what the client expected from me. It was challenging and time-consuming, but everything came out great in the end and I couldn't be happier about it. My point is that after this type of day-to-day -day projects, it's nice to get into something less demanding, without all these rules and just for the sake of pure enjoyment. No matter if you're doing this professionally or just as a hobby, it is nice to forget about the rules for a while. We're almost wrapping things up with this guy here. It's looking quite cool so far. We'd get rid of all strokes in the end, and it's gonna look even better. I'm just finishing up some details here and there. I don't want to leave any path without color. This is like coloring by numbers, you know, like kindergarten stuff. <laughs> I'm just missing a peanut butter sandwich here. Okay, that will be pretty much it. Now, select everything and let's get rid of those strokes for good. It looks awesome. Yes, weird, but awesome. I love the result so much that I ended up finishing the entire family. The original sketch is included in our creative pack in case you want to practice with these characters yourself. Keep experimenting with textures, adjustments, filters, whatever you feel up to. If you made it to the end of the video, wow, thank you for being so patient. I hope you have enjoyed this little journey and found something useful for your own art. If you have any further questions, do not hesitate to leave them below in the comment section. Don't forget to check our YouTube channel and our Frank and Tuna Studio website for more affinity-related tutorials and resources. Thank you, Affinity, for having me. See you next time.